Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes and I'm out here in the Cooper Tire and Vehicle Testing Center located about an hour outside of San Antonio. And right now I'm standing in what people affectionately refer to as Lake Cooper. It's the wet vehicle testing track. It's quite an interesting track. I just had the opportunity to drive on this a little earlier and I thought I'd tell you a little bit more about how this works and how they test vehicles right on this track. This is a 14 acre field of asphalt. It's perfectly square and it's also almost entirely level. It has just a one degree slope from this end that we're at right here all the way to that very far end down there at the back towards that little pavilion in the building down there. Again, it's 14 acres, 1% slope, and then these pipes that are running right along the side here are actually spraying water onto the test tracks. So they can have a very stable and predictable and very even water distribution on the asphalt. The way this works is if Cooper wants the water to be deeper on the track, all they do is turn up the volume basically on these water jets, sprays more water out on the road, and because the slope is so shallow, they can predict exactly how deep the water will get on the track. And they can vary that water by a decent amount on the track. We're in an area of Texas that's not exactly dry, but it's not exactly wet either. Therefore, Cooper was really interested in conserving water as much as possible. So we have these dams over here on the side to help keep the water channeled into the system. And all the water here is recycled. They're not just throwing this water away as soon as it goes down the drain. Wet weather traction seems to be something that a lot of people are scared about, and I think that's because people find wet weather traction a lot less predictable than dry traction or snow traction. People expect snow to be very slippery and they expect it to be difficult to drive in. So on the whole, people that are inexperienced about snow tend to drive extra cautiously, very slowly in the snow because they're really worried about falling off the road. However, when it rains, a lot of people don't seem to think that much about the rain. They drive just as fast in the dry as they do in the rain. And that's usually the wrong thing to do because wet weather traction can be a little bit unpredictable. At low speeds, traction is usually very good with any tire. However, as you get faster, the vehicle can hydroplane. And that's when the tire is actually riding on the surface of the water rather than the asphalt itself. It's going up so fast over that water that there's actually a water layer between the tire and the road. And of course, you don't get much traction just on water because tires aren't really designed as oars. That's what we're seeing in these vehicles out on the test track, like the one that just passed me right there. If you accelerate too fast, you can feel sort of a vagueness in the steering. That's the first feeling that you're starting to hydroplane out on the road, is if your steering starts to feel a little bit vague. The best thing to do in that situation is really just to keep hold of the steering wheel, keep it tight, and keep it in a straight direction as you let off the gas pedal. Don't apply your brakes, especially don't apply your brakes harshly. You just want to sort of ride that out. Just reduce your speed by lifting off the accelerator, let the vehicle slow down naturally, and you'll regain control. As we can definitely see with this vehicle in the corners, we definitely want to slow down around the corners because you can see that the vehicle is pushing further outward than it would on a dry track as well. Treads and tread designs are important on tires because that's how tires resist hydroplaning out on the road. That's why we have these grooves right here in the tire because the tire needs to be able to evacuate the water out from underneath the vehicle on the road. The more water you have on the road, the more the tire needs to evacuate that water. And rather unfortunately, the more tires wear, the less they are able to do that for you. Any tire out on the road is going to have less resistance to hydroplaning as it wears. So if you live in an especially wet area, you may want to consider replacing your tires more frequently than just by the tread wear indicators alone. Let's take a closer and more technical look at some parts of this tire. Right here we have these little blocks, and you'll find these on the H, V, and W rated versions of the CS5. This helps keep these blocks from getting too squished together, and that can really happen under a load. These narrow sections are called sipes, and they help the tire grip the road. So as you're moving along, the tire sections want to move in relation to one another, and that helps bite into the road, into snow, and other situations just a little bit better. It also helps the tire continue to have good traction as the tire wears along. If you move out to the outer side of the tire, you'll notice how much more rubber there is contacting the road right over here and if we move over to the inner side of the tire you'll notice how many more grooves there are on this side of the tire how many more deep channels there are to help grab in snow and other situations uh, like mud and gravel that sort of thing 